As you probably have heard, the suicide rate among veterans is alarming. An estimated 22 vets a day take their own lives. So an upstate couple began training potential lifesavers. They're golden retrievers ready to serve those who have served our nation. John Lee has a story in tonight's Carolina Moment. Most visitors view Falls Park in downtown Greenville as a tranquil escape. But dogs see the park a little differently. From birds flying by to the strangers milling around, there's a lot of eye candy in one place. Joanne Creed says that makes this the perfect setting to train service dogs. So I kind of wanted to work on like distractions more today, especially because there's ducks and there's stuff going on. To test them, she makes a racket. Perfect. Good boy. <laughs> they just, they don't want them to step back or, you know, recall, recoil. She also laid down a minefield of tempting treats. Kind of like, just like a little obstacle course. But the dogs are trained to focus. Yes. <laughs> leave it, leave it. It's part of a five day boot camp for service dogs. Eight years ago, Joanne co-founded Battle Buddies with her husband, a Marine veteran. He's getting it. We were starting to discover just how bad PTSD was a problem that 22 veterans a day commit suicide. And my husband and I talked about it and we're like, we gotta do something about this. For some of the veterans, they're just really getting to know their dog this week. Steak. Battle Buddies trains and provides service dogs for vets with PTSD and other issues at no cost. Steak. Steak. Katie, stay. Air Force vet Luke Bownock is with Golden Retriever Katie May. Thanks. What a difference she's made. Come, come, perfect. Come, 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 perfect. <laughs> Luke sustained life-changing injuries while serving our country, so he welcomed a wing dog to provide assistance. So she can help me with some of my physical disabilities from a TBI, a traumatic brain injury, and spinal cord injuries for mobility. <laughs> Veteran Jeff Granger served in the 101st Airborne Division. For 30 years, he's lived with severe pain from injuries sustained in uniform. Service dog Riggs gives him much needed support. I feel like it's going to help me tremendously. Like I have um, mobility issues and already I can tell he's able to stand and kind of give me balance. With a battle buddy by their side, the vets feel much more secure about getting out and about. I feel like he's going to help me the rest, rest of my life. Boot camp's the start of a beautiful friendship. In some ways, it signifies a new beginning. And just enjoy life is so worth it after everything they've sacrificed for us. Good girl. In Greenville, John Lee, News 13. And if you would like to support Battle Buddies, go to our story at WLOS.com for a link to the nonprofit. The city of Asheville's seven day notice to clear homeless encampments in Riverbend Park and near Isaac Dixon Elementary expires today. This follows the removal of two other homeless camps on Friday, including Aston Park, where police were met by protests. The city says the camps are being removed due to concerns about safety. As News 13's Taylor Stewart tells us, so far today's order to vacate has not been enforced. We spoke to several folks here who are experiencing homelessness. Their question to city officials is where exactly do you expect us to go? Yes, we're all scared about what's going to happen. We're just going to be shifted across the pond to another place to be homeless. All I can do is play it by ear. These men just waiting to see what the city plans to do next. As the removal notice expires, we asked a city spokesperson if their plan had changed and if they could share their assessment of the available shelter space. We were not able to get an immediate answer to those questions. Eric Hall says he hopes the city reconsiders. I wanted to hear it, have a discussion and, and agree together on what may be the best for both sides. We're not enemies. We need to work together to solve this. Asheville city leaders say they're working with Homeward Bound to provide support and shelter options for people experiencing homelessness. An offer Ron says he'd take them up on. It's better than sleeping out in the rain. We called several local shelters curious if there's adequate space to house folks out here. ABCCM says all 253 slots are filled to 100% capacity. The director at Western Carolina Rescue Ministries says for men, they've got just four beds left and for women, as well. We asked a city spokesperson what are the options for campers with COVID concerns like 56 year old camper James. He says he's got health concerns and the risk for COVID is just too high for a shelter. But if a city funded motel room is open, he'll take it. 
New tonight, bridging the gap. Community leaders say the pandemic has only made disparities in education worse for students at Asheville City and Buncombe County Schools. News 13's Caitlin Penter explains what leaders are doing to solve the problem. Leaders in Buncombe County say education is not equal for all students and it's getting worse. Right now, there's an incredible urgency and I think um, a shared urgency around this challenge of lack of equity in our education system. This week, Buncombe County Commissioners will consider joining the Asheville Buncombe United for Youth Network Partnership Agreement, an attempt to get community organizations, schools, and the county and city governments on the same page to tackle these issues. We want to do a better job helping our students be prepared. Data from Buncombe County shows the racial achievement gaps at Asheville City and Buncombe County Schools. In 2018, 20% of black students at Asheville City Schools met grade level proficiency compared to more than 80% of white students. That same year for Buncombe County Schools, less than 40% of black students met grade level proficiency compared to almost 70% of white students. Leaders say those gaps will likely widen due to the impacts of the pandemic. Families already struggling before, now struggling even more. From food security to neighborhood safety, access to health care. And for, for so many of these factors, we see enormous disparities uh, between people of color and whites due to structural and institutional racism. Leaders add an interesting point. The graduation rate has improved in the county, but leaders say students are coming out unprepared. You can have a number that indicates how many students are graduating, but if you're not looking at um, other indicators like their readiness for a career, their readiness for college, um, or something that we talk about is the readiness to, to be um, active and productive uh, members of their community. Both school districts have already signed on to the partnership. If the county joins, leaders from the county and United Way of Asheville Buncombe County will work with other organizations going out into the community and sharing data and ideas. With the goal by 2035, all students who graduate will be career ready. Commissioners vote on this on Tuesday night. Caitlin Penter, News 13.